Hello and welcome. Tonight, a somber moment for the nation as the 17 officers and men of the Nigerian army killed in the Kwama community in Delta State are laid to rest. The military hierarchy pays tribute to the fallen heroes, says their sacrifice will not be in vain. The president commiserates with the families of the slain officers and men, confers posthumous national honors, gives houses, scholarships to children of the army personnel, also orders payment of their entitlements within 90 days. And NSCDC busts oil thieves, uncovers large oil refineries in rivers and aquabum states, owners of the illicit trade apprehended. On business news tonight, FX rates for customs import duties dropped to about 1,405 naira to a dollar, and that's for the fifth consecutive time in two weeks. On sports news tonight, prosecutor seeks a two and a half year jail term for Spain's ex football chief Luis Rubiales over his unsolicited kiss on player Jenny Emerson. And from the nation's capital, Minister of Solid Minerals Development clarifies new mining rules, says only persons with prospective plans will be granted licenses. And in international news from London, six people are presumed dead after a container ship struck the Francis Scott Key Bridge as it left port in Baltimore. It was a somber atmosphere as the remains of the 17 army officers killed in Okwama community in Delta State on March the 14th were laid to rest today at the National Military Cemetery in Abuja with full military honors. Now, the event which had President Bola Tinubu as the special guest was attended by family members of the slain personnel who were joined by top military officers, including the service chiefs, governors and ministers, among other top government officials. While paying tributes to the slain army personnel, President Bola Tinubu conferred national Shall honors to the four minister. officers and 13 soldiers. Special he also directed that all their entitlements be paid to their families within 90 Executive days. Council. Members of the Federal Executive Council, Executive Governors, particularly of Delta and Bayesa State, Governors of Bayesa, We'll have more on that story. Well, meanwhile, the fight against oil theft continues in the Niger Delta. And this time, the NSCDC has uncovered illegal refining sites in Rivers and Aquabom states. The NSCDC authorities maintain that efforts are being stepped up to curb crude oil theft to the barest minimum and defeat the criminals. Over the years, the adverse effects of crude oil theft have dampened development and security agencies are coming up with steps to address the elephant in the room. As the vandals continue in the quest of illegal exploitation of oil reserves, like this wellhead operated by Shell Petroleum Development Company, the siphon crude oil is passed to already built holding wells through craftily laid underground pipes. A recent discovery by operatives of the NSCDC is the reason the River State Command is touring with journalists to reveal more of this illegal sites. If you look at the nature of this illegal operation taking place in this vicinity, you will know there is a cartel involved. By the time we start our investigation, a thorough investigation indeed, we will unravel the mystery behind this unscrupulous and nefarious activity. This looks like a stream, but it's not. It's pure crude flowing from a holding well which is full to the brim. The operators have since taken to their heels, but not this ones who couldn't escape the swift chase of the CG Special Intelligence Squad. According to the NSCDC PRO, each of this giant illegal refining pots is capable of producing 60,000 liters at a time. At the back view, you can see a large space where it's being stored. So as they are siphoning, 
they are storing and they are moving it out. We will confiscate all the materials that are being used for these illegal oil banking activities. After we have confiscated it, then we are going to shut this environment down and ensure that no activity takes place here again. In Akwa Bomb State, the NSCDC command also recovered illegal crude products stored in large storage bags, as the state commandant also briefed the press. On the 17th of March 2024, our anti squad at, the, at our checkpoint along Kalaba Itu Highway apprehended two suspects on bringing 100 bags of suspected adulterated automotive gas, oil, AGO, in an open bucket trailer with registration number FGL. 680ZS. On the 19th March 2024, another open bucket trailer with, re with reference registration number BB825 loaded with another 8017 bags of AGO, that's 5 liters each, and concealed under palm carnet shells, was also impounded and one suspect apprehended along Calabar E2 Highway. As the war on illegal production of petroleum and allied products continues, these discoveries is an appreciable feat in the fight against illegal refining and crude oil theft in Nigeria, as the NSCDC reassures that suspects will be apprehended and arraigned in court as soon as investigations were concluded in order to serve as a deterrent to others. In what it describes as a strategic move to strengthen the nation's economic governance framework, the presidency has announced the establishment of the Presidential Economic Coordination Council and the Economic Management Team Emergency Task Force. In a statement, the Special Advisor on Media and Publicity to the President, Ajurin Galali, outlined the membership of the PECC. They include the President as Chairman, the Vice President as Vice Chairman, President of the Nigerian Senate, Chairman, Nigerian Governors Forum, the Coordinating Minister for the Economy and Minister of Finance, Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria and 12 ministers. Key members of the organized private sector will be part of the council as well, joining for a period not exceeding one year subject to the president's directive. They include the chairman of Dangote Group, Aliku Dangote, chairman of Hairs, Hairs Holdings, Tony Elumelu, and the chairman of Bua Group, or BUA Group, Abdul Samad Rabiu, amongst others. According to the statement, the teams will complement existing economic governance structures, including the National Economic Council, which is chaired by the Vice President. In other stories, the law firm of Falano and Falano has written to the President of the Senate, Senator Gotu Lapabio, to request for the lifting of the suspension of its client, Senator Abdul Ningi. The letter dated March the 25th and signed by Senior Advocate of Niger, Mr. Femi Falano. The lawyer notes that Ningi's trial before the lawmakers on March 14th was contrary to the provisions of the Legislative House's Powers and Privileges Act 2018 and violated their client's fundamental right to fair hearing. He maintains that the Senate, by its actions, violated the right of the entire people of the Bochi Central Senatorial District to representation in the Senate for three months, a situation which is considered a breach of Section 111 of the Constitution in Article 13 of the African Charter and Human and People's Rights Act. The senior advocate wondered why the Senate president did not draw the attention of the lawmakers to a recent decision of the court which held that no parliament in Nigeria has the power to suspend or expel a legislator. Mr. Falano then demanded that Mr. Ningi's suspension be lifted within seven days, failing which the matter will be taken to court for the reinstatement of his client, as well as a report to the Legal Practitioners Disciplinary Committee for treating the judgments of the Federal High Court and the Court of Appeal with disdain. So, to infrastructure matters, the Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Mr. Yinsum Wike, is not happy about the possibility of a delay in the Kuje era council road construction project owing to an obstruction caused by some high voltage structures. After an inspection of the project in Kuje, the Minister explained that the FCT Authority is collaborating with the Transmission Company of Nigeria, the TCN, to devise a suitable plan to prevent the obstruction from further delaying the project. It is part of the constant, the race, and um, um, the, the Secretary of the FCG has said that they have written to 
the transmission company and are preparing to make some adjustment. So we believe in the next time I go back there for inspection, that would have been done. The stakeholders of the, this area council, that is Kuji, uh, they were the ones that uh, nominated this road to be dualized and it's total of five kilometers and just like what the contractor just said uh, they started from where they have less encumbrances um, so that by the time they get to where they may have some constraints uh, they will have sorted out the issues and from what they have said they have um, done the earthwork of two and a half kilometers and the next thing they want to start is the, the drainage we are very pressed and the one from the airport to the city here, uh, which is a six-lane car dualization by the Arab uh, contractors, uh, you can see with your eyes that uh, the work is going on very well. And with the quality of work we saw, we are quite satisfied too. Um, the contractors have said that before the end of the year, they would have completed all the airports. In Bielsa, Governor Doi Ediri has affirmed that despite the substantial expenses involved in road construction in the state, his administration remains steadfast in its dedication to deliver good infrastructure. He said this during an unscheduled inspection tour of the Nembe Brass and Yenagua Okuruma Okwebi Road projects. Bielsa State continues to witness infrastructure advancement across all its local government areas as articulated by Governor Derry during an inspection of ongoing projects along the Nembe Bras Road. The governor expressed contentment with the pace of work, but emphasized his commitment to completing all projects initiated during his initial tenure as a state's leader, prioritizing them despite the exorbitant cost of construction materials. Development cannot be arrested as a result of high cost of construction. Uh, what we are witnessing will be uh, what they call variation. Uh, the company will come up with variation and the uh, uh, Ministry of Works will look at it, evaluate it, assess it, and agree on the amount due for valuation. The governor, accompanied by other prominent members of his administration, also conveyed gratitude to President Tunubu for demonstrating a willingness to collaborate with the Bielsa State government in finalizing the project. Let me use this opportunity to appreciate and congratulate uh, His Excellency the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, whom I've met twice, and he has given me his word that he has directed the Minister of Works to collaborate by completing the second phase of this road. The significance of this project's construction and eventual completion is not overlooked by the locals who laud the government's efforts. Monde Obolo, a member of the Bielsa State House of Assembly, and Taufa Ngolo, the caucus chairman of a PDP Bielsa State, expressed their appreciation. The governor, His Excellency, has ex exceeded the expectations of our people. We are all excited. Traditional rulers, opinion leaders, day after day, they come to visit this work. We are all expectant and we are happy that we have lived to see this day. We as a people, on behalf of the political class, we should be assured of our continued total support and commitment. The newly appointed secretary to the Bielsa State Government, Professor Nimi Bofa Ayawe, described the project as highly ambitious while commending the governor for his efforts. The governor has said the funding is not going to stop. So we're very happy, we're glad that this is coming to pass in our time. Additionally, the governor urged the Niger Delta Development Commission to ensure the rehabilitation of the Obia Nemba Road field section, a project initiated during last year's election period in the state. In part two after the break, the 17 officers and men of the Nigerian army killed in the Kwama community in Delta State lay to rest, even as the military hierarchy pays tribute to the fallen heroes and says their sacrifice will not be in vain.
Welcome back. If you just if you just joined us, you're watching the news at 10 coming to you live on channels television from Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. 17 officers and men of the Nigerian army killed in the Kwama community in Delta State are laid to rest. The military hierarchy pays tribute to the fallen heroes, says their sacrifice will not be in vain. The president commiserates with the families of the slain officers and men, confers posthumous national honors, gives houses, scholarships to children of the army personnel, also orders payment of their entitlements within 90 days. NSCDC bus oil thieves uncovers large oil refineries in rivers and aquabomb states, owners of the illicit trade apprehended. And six people presumed dead in the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse in Baltimore, United States. Indeed, it was a somber atmosphere as the remains of the 17 army officers killed in Okwama community in Delta State on March the 14th were finally laid to rest today at the National Military Cemetery in Abuja with full military honors. At the event, President Bola Tinubu vowed to ensure that the perpetrators of the killings are fished out and brought to justice. Our correspondent, Deli Omoyeni, reports. <laughs> The bodies of the slain soldiers arrive at the National Military Cemetery. Families are devastated upon seeing the caskets containing their loved ones. Dignitaries from the federal cabinet, the state governors of Kanu, Delta, Bayelsa, Kwara, and Kugi states, the Nigerian army, and the National Assembly arrive in their numbers. <laughs> Finally, President Balatinumbu arrives, and the event is kick-started with the national anthem. You may have your seats. Thank you. Prayers are offered in both Muslim and Christian faiths for the repose of the souls of the slain soldiers and officers. We pray with confidence to God, who gives life to all things, that he will raise up these mortal bodies to the perfection and the company of the saints. The president had a lot to say about the situation. They have all been awarded now. A posthumous national honor. The four gallant officers have been accorded the award of members of the Order of Niger, M-O-N. The 13 courageous soldiers who also lost their lives have been awarded the officers of the Federal Republic Medal. I commiserate with the families of our fallen heroes and the entire armed forces. I share in their pain and grief, the grief you carry today. It is my prayer that God will comfort all who are bereaved as a result of this tragedy. I want to make it clear once more that those who committed this heinous crime will not go unpunished. We, we find them and our Departed heroes will get justice. The elders and chiefs of Okoma also have a duty to help the military in fishing out the government who committed the barbaric crime against our men. It's now our duty to protect the families of our departed heroes. The federal government will provide housing in any part of our country to each of the families of the four officers 
and 13 soldiers that were among them. The chiefs of defense and army staff re-echoed the president's vow to fish out the perpetrators of the heinous crime. We cannot begin to fathom the pain and sorrow that you are experiencing. Please know that you are not alone in our grief. As the entire nation, as exemplified by the president and commander-in-chief, and the armed forces mourn you with and stand ready to support you in every way possible. We recognize that no words can ease your pain, but we hope that you find solace in the knowledge that your loved ones made an indelible mark on our nation's history. To our fallen heroes, we say thank you. Thank you for your unwavering commitment to duty, your sacrifices, and your love for our nation. You serve bravely, and your courage will never be forgive, forget, forgotten. We will honor your memory by continuing the fight against those who seek to undermine our peace and security. We will remain steadfast in our resolve to build a nation worthy of your sacrifice. I must place on record that a lot of restraints have been exercised so far in our search and recovery efforts for missing arms, ammunition, other equipment, and body parts. The Okuoma killing has added to the care of the Nigerian army, and by extension, the Nigerian state, 10 widows, three of whom are four, five, and eight months pregnant, 21 orphans, and many other dependents, which include parents. While commiserating with the families of these gallant soldiers, I assure them that the Nigerian army and the good people of this country will not leave them in the cold. It's an emotional moment as the Nigerian flag is presented to the next of kin of the deceased. Next is to the next of kin of late Captain Yu Zachary, warrant of Sir Zachary. And next is to the next of kin of late Lance Corporal Bulus Haruna. As their bodies are committed to Mother Earth, and wreaths are laid by the president and dignitaries, the family members try unsuccessfully to hold back their grief. So-called just perform the dust-to-dust. -dust. Now there's a commitment by all authorities, from the president to the service chiefs, that the perpetrators of this heinous act will be brought to book. The president also graciously approved scholarships for the children of the disease from primary to the university level. From the military cemetery in Abuja, Delia Moyeni, Channels Television News. To politics, the National Convention of the Labour Party has re-elected Mr. Julius Aburi as its national chairman at the event, attended by 387 delegates in Newi of Anambra State. The president witnessed the exercise where the party's National Working Committee National Executive Committee, elected Labour Party members in the National and State Assemblies, as well as other party members. In his acceptance speech, Mr. Abure promised to continue to give purposeful and proactive leadership. I want to express my deepest appreciation and gratitude to all the delegates to this National Convention for the trust and the confidence reposed in us to continue as members of the National Working Committee. I also want to appreciate our own Deputy Governor and through him to all others from Abia State who came to assist us in giving life to this program today. Meanwhile, the president of the Trade Union Congress, the TUC, Mr. Festo Sosifo, is asking the re-elected chairman of the Labour Party and the leadership of the Nigeria Labour Congress 
to meet on how to eye out their differences and move the party forward. Zosifo, who was speaking on our political program Politics Today, explained that both parties have contributed to making the Labour Party known and should cooperate to build it. We think that the Labour movement has to do much more rather than, I mean, uh, sound bites here and there. We need to do much more if we think that our Labour Party belongs to us. What have we done? How many members have we mobilized into Labour Party in the last one, two, three, four years? Those should be the cross. Because if we don't mobilize people into that party, if we don't register one, two, three, four million of our members into that party, then some other people are doing it. It is difficult for us to, consistent, to consistently say that the certificate of registration of a party lies under our bed. So my encouragement is that Labour, uh, I mean, uh, Labour Party as it stands today, yes, it was uh, registered by uh, NLC as claimed. The certificate is there, but all stakeholders need to sit down together and harmonise on the way forward. As Abure has emerged today, I, we, I, I just want to uh, appeal to him that it should be magnanimous in victory by calling all the stakeholders together, everybody to sit down and itemise and determine the way forward regarding the party. Still ahead on the news at 10, forex rate for customs import duties drops to about 1,405 naira to a dollar for the fifth consecutive time in two weeks. That's on business news. Please join us again. Welcome back. Let's now head to the nation's capital and Terry Kumi stand by to give us the very latest from our Bridger Studios. Over to you, Terry. Well, thank you very much, Ayo. Now, the Minister of Solid Minerals Development, Mr. Delia Laki, says mining licenses in Nigeria will only be issued to persons who have prospective plans for value addition. Mr. Laki gave the condition during a visit to the $600 million iron ore mining and processing facility in Kaduna State. We will no longer license any company that wants to engage in a mineral sector without any concrete plans for local value addition. So today's event really is a milestone because it gladdens my heart that here is a company that has obeyed our admonition and has, in very concrete terms, show the whole world what local value addition actually means. It's not just going to cut or mine our iron ore and cut it away, export it away, what we call mines or pits to port. It's now going to process refine, giving way to multiplier effect of the economy of Nigeria, not of just the immediate environment. Myself and the Minister of Trade have gone around and we've seen the massive investment. In fact, is reputed to be the largest foreign direct investment into the mineral sector in Nigeria. About $600 million direct foreign investment. The Anambra state government has described as a hoax a video on social media depicting a road still under construction at Ochanja Market in Onicha as a failed road. Addressing the media at the construction site, the state commissioner for works, Mr. Ifai Okoma, alongside the contractor, debunked the narrative, which according to them is intended to malign the good works of the governor, Professor Chukuma Soludo. Every one of us is here, and you can see that the road is intact. We actually, in the night, saw this video, and first thing in the morning, we were here. Only to find out that there is nothing that happened on the road, the contractor worked on um, Sunday, and then stopped on a little bit, which you can see there, and closed for the day. Few hours after he has worked, he's left the site. Flood, there was a heavy damper, the drains were blocked, and that bit, which is less than um, less than one foot, a little bit got washed off. You can see I'm standing on the firm stone-based material that has not been touched, that is purely um, primed. Nothing is happening, so I'm shocked at the narrative that is going on there. But this is actually the one hand works of the tractors who are literally not happy that the amount of things we are doing. And I have to even bring the contractor because this is actually an embarrassment to the government. But as you can see, there is nothing that has happened here. 
In Kaduna State, Governor Obasani has flagged off the construction of a 5.5-kilometer road at Tudumbiri Village in Igabi local government area of the state. As part of, the rebuild in, uh, as part of rebuild in the community, after it was mistakenly bombed by a military drone on December 3, 2023. Governor Sani says the road, when completed, will ease the transportation of farm produce to the market, which will boost the economy of the area. Tudumbiri, a small community in a Gabi local government area of Kaduna State, was in the spotlight after a military drone on a routine mission against bandits mistakenly bombed the community on December 3, 2023, killing 100 civilians. It drew widespread reactions locally and internationally. A delegation of the federal and state governments, led by Governor Ubasani, visited the community for an assessment of the situation. He also noticed the level of poverty and dirt of infrastructure, like health facilities, functional school and road networks in the community, despite its proximity to the Kaduna state capital and the airport. A promise was made to change the infrastructural situation. The fulfillment of that promise has started with the flag off of the construction of a 5.5-kilometer road that will link the community to the state capital. The governor, accompanied by his deputy, Dr. Hadiza Balarabi, are in the community to kick off the project. This road we are, construct, we are doing the groundbreaking today, which is about 5.5-kilometer uh, asphalt road, will certainly help the people of this community so that the travel time from this very important community to the town will be reduced. Governor Sani also flags up the construction of a hospital and skills acquisition center, in addition to the sinking of a solar power borehole in Tudumbiri. He believes that such facilities will enhance the well-being of residents and also provide employment opportunities for the community. As you are aware, the important community has no hospital around this area. That is the reason why as part of our agenda of the government, healthcare is one of the most important areas we're also focusing on. That is the reason why we budgeted about 15% of our budget to healthcare. When we cultivate our, our agents of farmers, so we, have, uh, we can get uh, the roads which we are going to carry our goods to the city. When these projects are completed, the residents of Tudumbiri community will no longer have to journey long distances in search of medical care or have difficulty bringing their goods to the market. Staying with Kaduna State, the Kuriga school children freed from bandit captivity have been reunited with their parents in Kaduna. The 137 students and pupils were kidnapped from their school, LEA Primary and Government Secondary School, Kuriga, in Chukun local government area, triggering a manhunt for the kidnappers and efforts to rescue the victims. Three days later, their release, three days after their release in Zamfara State and following their reception at the government house in Kaduna State, the children were today handed over to their families by the Secretary of the Kaduna State Government on behalf of Governor Ubasani. And that's all from the nation's capital. Back to you, Ayo. Thank you so much, Terry. To help matters in Enugu State, where Governor Peter Mba has signed the Enugu State University of Medical and Applied Sciences Teaching Hospital Bill 2024 into law. While commending the Enugu State House of Assembly for accelerating action on the executive bill, he notes that the legal framework will enable him to upgrade the institution to a teaching hospital in no distant time. We cannot thank the speaker and other members of the State House of Assembly for the swift nature in which they attend to our request. And as also demonstrated in this particular view. So we want to thank you most uh, sincerely for the support you give to us. Again, what we have now done by signing into law the State University Medical and Applied Sciences Teaching Hospital 
is that we now have in place a legal framework to immediately begin to put in place all that is required to upgrade the medical and applied sciences university to a teaching hospital. This is part of our campaign promise and we are committed to delivering on that. On our part, we are not going to spare any time in making sure that everything that is necessary and required to upgrade and get a teaching hospital operational, get all the necessary approvals uh, that is required to operationalize the teaching hospital we are going to do. Time now for some business news with Will Ebon. Thank you, Ayotunde, and welcome to Business News. Now, in a rapid succession of changes, the exchange rate used for customs, import duties, and cargo clearance has seen its fifth consecutive decline in less than two weeks. From 1,612 naira per dollar on March the 15th, it has now dropped to 1,405 naira, 46 copper per dollar, according to data from the Nigerian Customs Service. These fluctuations highlight a consistent devaluation trend, showing the Naira's resilience against other currencies across both the parallel and official foreign exchange markets. Meanwhile, over the last two weeks, there has been a significant surge in the Naira's value, rising from 1,615 Naira per dollar on March the 13th to 1,382 Naira per dollar on Tuesday, March the 26th. Now, authorized dealers facing challenges in providing Naira cover for FX inflows intended for purchasing money market instruments for foreign investors now have the option to sell the FX to the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, and receive the equivalent amount in Naira to their account. This announcement comes amidst reports of a liquidity squeeze within the banking sector, hindering authorized dealers from acquiring money market instruments for foreign investors. This move by the CBN is in line with its monetary policy objectives, which aims to stimulate foreign inflows into the economy. To utilize this option, authorized dealers can formally approach the CBN by submitting requests using their bank's letterhead. Now, the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPC Limited, has clarified that there is no reduction in the price of petrol and diesel at its filling stations across the country. The statement by NNPC Limited follows earlier reports of a crash in the price of petrol. The report claimed that the NNPC Limited had crashed the depot price of petrol from 640 naira per litre to 570 naira per litre. According to the company, the earlier reports are false and misleading and urges Nigerians to completely ignore them. NNPC also reaffirms its commitment to maintaining the current supply of petroleum products across all its retail outlets in the country. Now we head to the domestic equities market where it's recorded its first positive close for the week as investors appear to ignore the CBN's latest interest rate hike. Ini John Mekwa has the details. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the stock market report. Well, for the very first time this week, we have a positive trade. We regained at 104,000 and closed at 104,283.64. Gained 0.32%. That's for the all share index. And we see also that uh, from 58.7 trillion naira we had yesterday, we're now at 58.963 trillion naira. Some money made in the market now, and it's thanks to most of the fugas. For Zenit Bank, it gained 8.76%. That's Zenit Bank. And then we have Access Core doing well these days after uh, that uh, buy of uh, that Kenya Bank. And then GT Co also uh, did contribute to that as well well as UBA. The only negative for the figures today was uh, FBN holding, but I'm sure its day will come. Look at the sectors and of course we expect this to reflect. So we see banking is up more than 3%, making up for the losses of this week, 3.01%. Consumer goods is still in the negative 0.11%, and that's because of international breweries and uh, the northern Nigeria flour mills right there. 
oil and gas hasn't changed its stance. It's still unchanged. Uh, you know, maybe a windfall will come very soon. But, um, well, for today, it's the first gain for the week, the first positive, and the bull shows its face. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ini. Now let's check in on other global markets across the world. And that's it on Business News. It's back to you, Ayotunde. It's now John Summer, busy with our international news and around the world in five. Good evening and welcome to the channel's studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. Six people are presumed dead after a container ship struck the Francis Scott Key Bridge as it left port in Baltimore. Officials say investigators have boarded the ship, which crashed into the bridge on Tuesday and recovered its data recorder. The bridge snapped and plunged into the Patapsco River at about 1.30 in the morning after the Dali container ship crashed into it. The last thing we want to do is put divers in the water with changing currents, low temperatures, very poor visibility, and so much metal and other unknown objects in the water. All it takes is one object to strike an individual, and all of a sudden we have a first responder trying to recover another first responder. At least five people have been killed and others injured in a motorway crash involving a coach near the eastern German city of Leipzig. The Flixbus coach veered to the right on the busy A9 autobahn before falling onto its side. The Flixbus service had left Berlin with two drivers and 53 passengers and was on its way to Nuremberg en route to Zurich, the company confirmed. Officials in the state of Saxony said their thoughts were with the victims. Shares of Donald Trump's media and technology group have surged as much as 59% in their Nasdaq debut, lifted by the former U.S. president's supporters and providing him a potential windfall as he grapples with the costs of several legal cases. At its session high of $79.38 per share, TMTG's market capitalization crossed $10 billion on an undiluted basis, an astronomical valuation for a company that reported an operating loss of $10.6 million for the first nine months of 2023 on revenue of just $3.4 million. The stock closed at $57.99, valuing the company at nearly $8 billion. Bereaved relatives have recovered the remains of loved ones whose doomsday cult leader induced them to starve themselves in a case that shocked Kenya and the world. The bodies of more than 400 followers of the Good News International Church have been exhumed from the Shakola Forest in southeastern Kenya since April 2023 in one of the world's worst cult-related tragedies of recent decades. Cult leader Paul McKenzie handed himself over to police last April and is facing murder charges along with 29 others. There are 390 plus bodies yet to be identified positively. Going at this rate, we are going to be here for 10 years trying to identify the 390 plus bodies. I think the government must uh, intentionally commit resources towards this process so that we are able uh, to give closure to families. Four private colleges described as being dysfunctional have been ordered to close in South Africa, leaving thousands of students in limbo. Higher Education Minister Blade Zimande said they had fabricated exam results as well as other issues. The Education Department said the institutions failed to submit audited financial statements since 2020. The colleges are owned by Ecuador, one of the largest private education providers in Southern Africa. For some time, our directorate that deals with private higher education institutions has been receiving many complaints from students against the EDUCO institutions, most of which remain unresolved. And these complaints relate to the following. Poor quality of teaching and learning, lack of proper administrative support, poorly qualified staff, corruption and bribery, lack of response for requests for refunds, lack of professionalism, 
exploitation of poor students, non-payment of staff salaries, and underpayment of staff salaries. Footage released by Colombian armed forces show them chasing a boat laden with tons of cocaine off the coast of the San Andreas Island. Five people were detained in what was the country's largest shipment of cocaine seized this year. According to local authorities, the cargo was valued at $89 million. And the floating piece of wood that kept Titanic's rose alive has been sold for $718,000 at auction. Ever since the release of the 1997 film, fans have wondered whether the panel, often mistaken for a door, was big enough to fit her love interest Jack as well, saving him from an icy death. The listing noted the prop has caused much debate from fans. The sale was made during an auction of props and costumes owned by restaurant and resort chain Planet Hollywood. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the channel's studios in Lagos. Thank you, Simon. Welcome to Sports News. Super Eagles interim coach, Finidi Judge, has described the team's performance as commendable despite losing to Mali in Tuesday's friendly game in Marrakech, Morocco. Goals from El Bila Touré and Kamaru Dumbia secured a 2-0 win for Mali. It was a first win for Mali against Nigeria since 1975. A prosecutor at Spain's High Court is seeking a prison sentence of two and a half years for former Football Federation chief Luis Rubiales over his unsolicited kiss on Jenny Hermoso. Prosecutor Marta Durantes charged Rubiales with one count of sexual assault and one of coercion for his alleged actions in the aftermath of the kiss offences carrying jail terms of one year and 18 months respectively. Wales football top official has confirmed Rob Page will continue as national team manager despite the failure to qualify for the Euro 2024 finals. Football Association of Wales President Steve Williams has moved quickly to remove doubt over Page's future. It comes after the penalty shootout defeat to Poland in Tuesday's night uh, playoff final. The 49 year old signed a deal in 2022 to take him through to the next World Cup. American Daniel Collins powered into the semifinals of the WTA Miami Open with an emphatic 6-3-6-2 win over Francis Caroline Garcia. Collins broke to go 5-3 up in the first set and then hurt serve for the set. Then in the second set, broke in the third game and never looked back as she wrapped up the win in one hour and 19 minutes. Collins reached the semifinals of Miami six years ago as a qualifier. The 31-year-old American now has 4-0 record against Garcia and has yet to lose a set to the French woman. That's it on sports. It's back to you, Ayotunde. Many thanks, Chris. And the main news again. The remains of the 17 officers and men of the Nigerian army killed in the Kwama community in Delta State were today laid to rest after a funeral ceremony at the National Military Cemetery in Abuja, where top officers paid tribute to the fallen heroes, saying their sacrifice will not be in vain. And the president has commiserated with the families of the slain officers and men and conferred posthumous national honors, promised houses, scholarships to children of the army personnel, and ordered the payment of their entitlements within 90 days. And that's the news at 10 tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Ivan Sunday. Have a good night. Peace, peace.